Okay, guys. So to continue my ranking of all 38 um 2018 released films that I saw, and we left off with 24th place. So now 23rd place is gonna be Robin Hood. To me, it took the concept of making a Robin Hood movie and was like, let's just do that, but completely different. <laughs> you know, I feel like. I feel like this was a Robin Hood movie by name and by premise, sort of pre- by premise only. So sort of by name and premise only. in a way. Everything else just it didn't feel like any Robin Hood movie. Other than it, the stars Robin Hood and you know the and the um, premises you know steal from the rich, give to the poor. Other than that, and even, I don't know, I'm not a big thing with the Robin Hood character, but I at least know that there's no way a lot of this stuff could have happened. A lot of stuff, I just can understand that, how, why would they take, you know, this sort of character and put them in scenarios that you just don't fit with, you know, I feel like what they established, and I feel like they just made it in such a way where, like, they quickly threw him into the Robin Hood mantle. In a way, it makes it feel rushed. It was just like in one second, he could barely stand stand up for himself in war and then go to the, be this awesome archer. And it just didn't feel right because how, how is he able to defeat all these people? And and just su- and it, with such little training, such little practice. You know, and, uh, they, all the actors, you know, Jamie Foxx um, and Tara. Egerton, I believe. Uh, they all did good acting, but it just didn't, again, didn't feel like a Robin Hood movie. And, and also, they tried to take, you know, Robin Hood into the modern world, and yet it's still set in the past. So, like, there's, like, guns with, like, arrows that, like, blow up buildings and stuff. It's like, that can't really happen, but they're just trying to, like, well, how can we substitute, how can we make arrows seem like guns? Well, let's do this. And it's kind of like they wanted to put Robin Hood in the modern world, but they can't really do that because they know it's not where Robin Hood is. So they like tried their best to try to say, try to make this Robin Hood film that seems so modern, but it's like it doesn't even land that well because it's not that modern. Because you still understand the past settings, and every time it tries to be modern, it just doesn't make sense because it's not set in the modern world, and it doesn't need to be. It wouldn't it'd feel even less of a Robin Hood film, and even then. You know, the plot was not even the best. It was just so cliche. You know, good guy, you know, does, you know, feels betrayed, you know, lonely, you know, hit rock bottom, essentially, gets trained by someone, you know, the mentor character, and then the mentor character helps, you know, the hero grow, and then the hero goes on missions, tries to, gets the girl, and yada, yada, yada. I can't remember. The mentor character, you know dies and yada 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 happy ever after villain dies it's like cliche and they don't really put any spin on it and not like but this happens to spin the biggest spin is that they do unrealistic stuff it takes like what if robin hood could dodge 10 heroes at a time what if this can happen what if that can happen and it's like oh my gosh it's like can't you see it just doesn't work that way so yeah, Robin Hood's at that place where it's like, I can have fun with it. I can re-watch, it's, re-watch it and just say, like, ah, I probably wouldn't rewatch it because, like, I, would, I don't think I'd ever be in this type of credential to watch a Robin Hood movie, go to this movie, and just, like, be able to sit through all this stuff that just doesn't make sense in this place and time. 22nd place is The Grinch. Now, I have to say, considering how much of a kid's movie this is, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, considering how much of a, you know, you know, little kids, kids, I'm still a kid, sort of. But like, considering how much, how, you know, little the target audience is for, it still had a nice sense of humor. Although, just like most of these, like, illumination and, you know, kiddish illumination films, it's predictable. I'm not going to lie to you and say, but this happened. With it. But it was in a predictable way you can still enjoy it. Because it's not like they weren't, they weren't, but like you can still, you still don't really care that it's predictable because it's like, 
the whole, it's, it wasn't really trying to put a big twist on the Grinch. It was just saying, like, this is the interpretation of Grinch that we're going for. Here it is. Because, like, if you know the Grinch story, you're going to know everything that happens in this film. You know, but the humor, the jokes, they're all good. You know, I don't think there was, like, a big, like, fart joke or, like, low jokes that are, like, like, obviously they're for kids. Like, I wouldn't laugh at it. There's nothing really that. And there still was some humorous moments that were funny, you know? In other moments, they were going for jokes at the same time, just conveying at the anger of Grinch. Because, like, most of the jokes were, you know, you know, how the Grinch reacted to certain scenarios. Like, the clock, right at the beginning when he throws the clock down. What I love is that at this po- part, part was when he threw the clock down, you know, I guess the funny element was it wouldn't shut off and he just didn't really good. So it was more about, like, the funniness is, like, kind of the humor is kind of, like, at the same time showing how everything's going wrong for the Grinch. And so I feel like that's pretty clever. But other than that, it's just a Grinch film. It has nothing special. It has, it has no really, you know, reason to, like, be that best. It's not great animation. It's not great storytelling i mean it's like grinch and like this little girl or like the two characters that even like talk really so it's like you kind of could get bored in the film i mean it's really short so it's really hard to get bored because either like you see grinch being annoyed or you see Grinch. there's like three different parts of this whole film you see grinch get annoyed the grinch you know yeah like a few there's like three different parts the grinch The Grinch gets annoyed, you know, the Grinch steals Christmas, the Grinch turns good. That's as simple as it, and it's just, like, I feel like, similar to Robin Hood, I just wish they would actually take risks, that they would actually do something unique. But instead, you end up getting just another interpretation of the Grinch. You don't really get anything, like, that was clever, that was an original. They didn't really have any originality, so I can't really give it that much of anything with it. Um, whatever. 21 is the commuter. Um, another, it's a, another, it's a Liam Neeson film. Um, I, I, I could respect this film and enjoy this film in some levels. You know, as the mystery is kind of the air, but like, but like at the same time, you could get bored with this one because like, there's a lot of slow moments at the beginning because like you care about the mystery, but the, then at the same time, there's a lot of parts where it takes away from the mystery as they don't continue the mystery. You know, they kind of back hold it, and it does have a tw- sort of like a twist at the end, but at the same time, it's like you could tell it's coming because like you, if it didn't happen, you'd pretty much be done with the movie, you know, 15 minutes earlier. So it's like. There's stuff that I can say, like, that was cool, and stuff that I could say, like, I kind of enjoy that, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff where it's, like, I wish the plot would move faster, I guess. Because, like, they were trying to driven out all these side characters that could be part of the overhanging mystery, but they didn't really, for the most part, didn't really have a big impact. So it's, like, you just see the setting, you see, see these characters, but you don't really care for them. you don't know, really like hi i wish it wasn't you i wish you yeah you know, i wish you could be better i wish you could have a bigger part of this and then you didn't really feel that you didn't really feel like you really cared people you didn't care were his family despite how little the screen time was but you could also feel for you know the main character and how he gets fired and how all these things happen to his life and you just feel for him so the whole time you actually feel a sense of care for what he's doing you have a sense of i want him you know i want this to work out for him i want this to happen i want you know again i want this to work you i want you know it to go this way i want this to go that way i want it to be just good just right sorry and so you actually care for the character but you don't just like uh, you care for him but at the same time it's not in a way where like it's really that engaging because again you just want the plot to move forward but it just doesn't it comes to an abrupt halt in story so you just don't really get the satisfaction you might have wanted but again overall not terrible okay top 20 mortal engines takes us off at 20. um it's an interesting one as where i feel like they it was 
there were some original moments. The whole idea of mortal engines of like it's London on engines can move and like different cities that can move and stuff. That idea and that concept was really interesting. But I also kind of thought about this idea of like it seems like a kind of like a wannabe Star Wars. Like if you know what I'm saying. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that, how does that make sense? It's just it does, it's not a wannabe Star Wars. It, it's different. But I just felt the sense of, I feel like it was trying to be, I felt like it was, almost wanted to go in that direction. And it had some of the cliches these big blockbusters have, except it's not really a big blockbuster. And at the same time, I think to describe it, other than the big idea of having, you know, these cities on engines, that's like the most, that's super original, but it doesn't make up for all the other cliche parts. You know, big bad, laser beams, all this stuff. You know, heroes, mentor dying, all this stuff. That again, I, that just seemed so cliche. Cause like, I wish they would have established more about the, the engines, London engines. Cause they don't really use that to their, like to the action purposes that much. You'd think, that every action scene would just ride on the fact that you can, like this whole concept should have had amazing action, but instead they sacrificed that for cliche laser beams on on the actual London and you know cliche fights. Instead, you like there was the, the action that was involving the engines, the um you know vehicle cities were cool but that wasn't that much that wasn't enough to save the film it wasn't enough to say because of that i love the film it it was just there because it was like it was cool you know it wasn't great it wasn't fantastic and there was still some cool moments but i think you got to look at the you know overall picture and really say is it that good is it you know no not is it worth watching but like is it worth you know, putting it any higher on this list, and that would be no, because I feel like all this rest stuff has more originality, has more original plots, and, and like, it felt, like, really, not dark in the sense, like, it's scary dark, but, like, had some really dark moments and dark, and what also took me off from the story was the ghost character that she was raised by this ghost, because, like, before that, I could kind of see where the world would go to kind of have mortal engines, like, engine stuff, well, obviously, it would never be really happen this particular way. It was kind of cool seeing, um, you know, all these electronics and from the past and, like, seeing them, you know, how our technology to them seems just so ancient. And back to the thing is where that, um, the, um, what's it called? The ghost kind of, like, um, resurrected guy, the resurrected, you know, um, guardian of our main character took me out of the film as then you took, I feel like, the re- any real reality sense that this film could, you know, could have some realistic moments. Not, it's like, it's not realistic. It's more sci-fi than anything else. But any groundedness just got taken away. Because they tried to not only have him in the film, but give him some heart. And, like, I guess the they try, heart didn't, the, giving him the heart, giving, like, a heart side of it, just didn't really work because, like, the whole concept of this just didn't fit with this type of movie. You know, you already had a big enough plot with Valentine. You didn't need, you know, um, the zombie in it, too. You didn't need this character. It didn't need him. I think it would have been a lot more emotional if you just had her on the run by yourself and just wanted comfort, wanted family, instead of just having this whole element with the you know, resurrected ghost. You didn't need that. You didn't need that. It wasn't necessary. It was like, took it took me out of the film quite a bit. Okay. 19th place. Tenet. I thought, I thought I kind of liked how they blended action with comedy and they added this game, you know, element of tag where it's like, you remember playing it as like a, you know, a kid in elementary school, and you just remember, and it just took a lot of, I guess, themes that, like, you remember when you played the game tag, and just turned it on its head, it's like one of those movies where it's, like, it takes, like, an, you know, a kiddish concept, and just throws adult, you know, 
crazy humor with it. And so the humor landed. The whole tag element landed. But I don't know. It kind of... You know, it took the concept in it, and I wouldn't say bored me, but it, it just, I didn't really get that much of a flow to it after, like, halfway through the movie. It kind of was just, like, boring, because, like, it, you're not boring. You just got frustrated. <laughs> it's like you want him to get tagged, but it doesn't wait till the very end. It's like the old Jeremy Renner character. You just wanted them to get along. You wanted them to be friends. And it was like, I, I would have liked it, because they took the tag element, but they didn't really have any real tag elements, because... One, it was like, it was like one of those tag games where, like, you, you have, like, a friend and you're all teaming up against this one guy, but the one guy never gets tagged until, like, the very end, and the way he got tagged wasn't even rewarding. It didn't really leave you satisfied the way he got tagged, because, like, they literally, he wanted to be tagged. They didn't tag him as in, you know, it, it was, like, rewarding. They tagged him because Martin Merton's sense of, I'm, you know, done having my streak. It was like, that kind of sucked. That kind of sucked. You didn't, I didn't really, like, like, you didn't feel satisfied at the end. You didn't feel like, oh, the way they tagged him was what they were building up to. When they tagged him, it was like, oh, come on. Can you make a bigger effort? And they really never really did. It wasn't really climactic as far as the way they tagged. They were just like, okay, fine, I'll get tagged. And like, oh, you ended up getting tagged. So it didn't really leave you satisfied, but also... Like, think about that tag game. It's like, all your bunch of friends are teaming up against this one guy, but the one guy never gets it. It's like, that actually is pretty boring. You know? To say the least. Because, like, the whole game of tag is like, you don't, not necessarily you don't know who's it. But, like, I feel like, I get it, it's a comedy, and it's like a spoof of stuff. But, you know, I've seen comedies that have blended, you know, types of things like this better. And as far as the jokes, the jokes were definitely the best part. Because the whole tag element wasn't the best and wasn't really that good at all, really. But there was still some nice, clever stuff in this movie. 18th place, The Death of Superman. Um, This was an animated movie that, um, but from the DC animated first. Um, that I really liked. It took this classic comic of the death of Superman and adapted it, I feel like, definitely the best way it could. And I really don't have any big negatives to say. The Reign of Superman, which, Reign of Superman, which I'll get to in, you know, maybe a 2019 list. But what I'll get to later, when I, if, if, when I do my 2019 list, but beyond just the 2019 list, the whole idea of, um, what was, what was I saying? No, the whole premise of um of taking this great comic and putting them in animation the best way they could was really exciting. It was really exciting to see it play out, and it was like it wasn't like boring in the sense where it's like all they showed was the whole death of Superman part. They built up to it. They had great character moments, which is like something you can't really. It's hard to really say with like anime movies. movies movies to say that they really had good build-up, had good, almost no, like, foreshadowing. All these moments, all these characters, and as far as the action, as far as Doomsday itself, it brought a great threat. And I get it, it's called the death of Superman, so, like, it's kind of a spoiler, but it's not at all. Because, like, the comic is called the death of Superman. The novelties, you're watching to see him get broken. Because the plot is not surround him dying. It's the, it's surrounding what the people think of him. It's surrounding, you know, his character. It's surrounding what you represent. It's surrounding that people care for him. It's a, it's not about, you know, is he going to survive or is he not. It's about showing what he means, what's his impact. Whether it's just him in the normal life, in his normal world, with his normal family, or whether... um. You know, it's after he died and seeing all the reactions from the Justice League, from Lois, from his parents, from all this stuff. So, like, even when it's not actually fighting Doomsday, there were still a lot of heart and good emotions to it in the sense where you got moments where, you, like, he visited the fam, his family came, you know, with Lois, then they ate a meal. And you just got grounded emotionness that surrounded it. And, and you really cared for him. You really cared for Superman. You cared, you know, not, and you cared for what he represented. You know, not for survival, because you knew 
he's obviously going to die. But you cared for his legacy. And so that was really clever and really important that they nailed that right. 17th place is Venom. When it's not with Venom, I still liked it. I, I mean, not still liked it. I liked it. When it was Venom, when it was full Venom. Let's just, like, when he fully embodied the Venom. It was good. Not, not like it was like, oh, this is really good. No, it was like, okay, I like that. You know, I don't think there was really any parts of the movie where it's like, that's a great choice, and that's a great movie. There was no real parts where it's like, okay, I really, 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 really respect it. There's moments I respect, but there's no, like, that was amazing. And as far as, like, the whole, yeah, I feel like the whole Venom plotline was enough. I don't think he really needed this whole side plotline of this other symbiote, you know. You know, I didn't need that. You know, it was just Venom, I think, would be would be nice just to see a genuine villain film. A, a superhero villain film. Because you've never really seen that. You know, and I think Joker's going to be really exciting, you know, just to know. Because like, I, feel, I feel like Vil- Venom would probably be the first real genuine superhero film that actually has a villain that's full-on villain. And yeah... You're not gonna, you don't just want to see a full-on villain, but you want to see with, at least, obviously, they're going to give, you know, some, what's it called, some, uh, you know, reason to root for him. But again, like, you wanted to see Venom full evil, but you caught him as a hero. That should know what Venom is. So, like, when he is full-on Venom, the action would be bad, the whole CGI, the whole, you know, moments of Venom aren't bad. The one just story, the way they did it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was just average. And as far as what you wanted, you didn't get, again, you also didn't really get that, that satisfied. But at the same time, it wasn't bad. You know, I, I still liked Venom. I still would, like, you know, say I'd probably rewatch it. I'd probably say, well, yeah, you know, it's not terrible. I actually liked all the characters. You know, as far as the, the only big negative would be the other Venom, you know, symbiote. That's, like, the only real big negative. It's, like, I don't really care. For the other symbiote, it's like, why do you need to be in it? You, like, you already have a juggling act just juggling Venom. You didn't really need it. And I'm not saying it's a juggling act, but, like, they, it wasn't even, like, an hour. It was, like, an hour and 40 minutes. So, like, to really flesh out the Venom character, you really needed all the time you could get. And that's why it felt rushed sometimes. It felt like they were going from one sequence to the next without really giving a moment to pause, a moment to really think about this, a moment to for the plot in a necessary way. It was just like one big plot beat after one big plot beat. There was no like little moment to be like little soft scene. There was no real soft, you know, no real part where you could be like, not like there's no part where you can go to the bathroom. I'm not saying that. But there's no real part where you can be understand what's going on. Let a chance to like kind of like get the character's reflection. It was just like he becomes Venom. Stuff happens. Stuff goes down, you know, new symbiote emerges, and they don't even really get a good part for Venom in, you know, um, Venom in a, you know, what's this? and, uh, and, uh, Tom Hardy's character to really, you know, understand what's going on. It was just, like, one moment to the next, one moment to the next, one moment to the next, and that just wasn't the most satisfying. But it still wasn't bad. I, I still can enjoy it. You know, there was still a lot of good moments. There were still a lot of respectable moments. So overall, it was it was decent. It was good. So it was good. It was average. It was it was something where I can watch again. It was, but it wasn't something where I can say like that's amazing. That's something I can well, rewatch, rewatch, rewatch. But it's something where it's like I do like the action. I do like the characters. I do like the plot. But it just felt off in the sense where it's like they had potential. But they just dropped it because they needed a villain. They needed him to be a hero. And while you get good villain or Venom crazy moments, you just want him to go full villain, but he never does, if you know what I'm saying. So that was my 24th to 17th. Um, We will do the rest in other videos. Stay tuned for more videos coming right at you.